Alright, so what do we have right here is in, ano, in the sexual reproduction are the advantages of it. Alright, so what makes the right what makes this uh, particular um, type of reproduction advantageous? Alright, so number one is the offsprings are genetically unique from one another. So meaning to say that the offsprings here. Alright, so generally there are too many but um, not all of them are the same. Alright, so meaning to say everyone is varied from another. Why they are varied? It's because one there is one process that is happening here during sexual reproduction. It is called the crossing over. Now, during the crossing over, it happens during the meiosis. Now, if you recall, um, if you recall meiosis, Alright, if you recall meiosis during your 8th grade science, it, uh, it is a type or it is a kind of cell division in which the daughter cells is produced from a parent cell with the haploid number of chromosome. Alright, so what is that, where, is that cross, where is that crossing over happening? Alright, so it happens in the chromosome of the organism. For example, we have the green one here and... We have another one, another chromosome here. This this homologous chromosome during meiosis, they tend to this telomere, their telomeres that we have right here, these telomeres or these chromatids that we have right here, is uh, they tend to cross each other like the one that we have right here. So they tend to cross each other. Then after crossing over, all right. So after crossing over, what will happen is, so the green one. Or the green chromosome that we have right here will now have the orange one and the other one will now have the green one so for example this is the orange one all right so if this is the orange one so this one will now have the um, this one the orange one will now have the green part of that chroma chromosome and the other one which is the green one will now have the orange part of the other one so meaning to say uh, there is what they call a genetic recombination that happened on along the w along the process of meiosis all right so that's the that's the crossing over all right that is very that is a very very uh, that is a very important process in meiosis all right next one independent assortment now if you recall mendel's uh, three laws of heredity one is law of dominance one is law of segregation and the other another one is the law of independent assortment now it talks about or it tells us that uh, it tells us that the genes are completely independent from each other for example if if this gene is somehow coded to become tall then this one is for the skin color we have black all right so meaning to say the height will not affect the color of the skin so as the color of the skin will not affect what will be the height of the organism all right so meaning to say this two uh this two these two uh, traits are completely independent over each other. Next one, uh, there is what they call the random fusion of gametes. So why do you think? Why do you think is the reason why um, why there are so many sperms produced by a male organism? One answer is because of uh, because they do have random chances of fertilization so not all of them not all of the not all of them will fertilize the egg one sperm one egg and all that that's all that matters and once that particular sperm fertilize the egg and then that's the that's another unique organism unique over his parents yeah, and over its parents so what will happen is there is what they call a the random chance of fertilization all right so Meaning to say, there is no such thing as a selective fusion of gametes in which you will select which sperm is uh, should fertilize the particular egg. Yeah. Okay. So that's not letter C. Next one. Uh, sexual reproduction is is uh, favorable when the environment is somehow 
is not stable. Why? It's because the more unstable the environment, the more the tendency for an organism to change and adapt to its environment is also increased. So, meaning to say, if there's a change in environment, therefore, the organism will tend to adapt on that and then develop, uh, the DNA will uh, likely to mutate, then what happens is you will produce another uh, unique organism out of that change in the environment that happened along the way. Alright, so sexual reproduction is only uh, favorable when the environment is unstable. Alright, next one. Uh, one of its advantages, somehow, is faster evolution. Although, it has faster evolution but it has slower rate of reproduction. Why this is slower rate? It's because you need to recombine genes, you need to find mate, uh, you need to do some animal, uh, you need to do some uh, unusual behavior in order to reproduce. So those things require a lot of energy. So that's the reason why it uh, somehow uh, the rate of reproduction is somehow slower. All right, but in terms of how the organism becomes more and more unique, that is faster. So. Meaning to say, sexual reproduction promotes evolution, promotes changes in the organism. Alright, so next, number four is lower rate of extinction. Because the organisms are varied, because the organisms that are produced are varied, therefore, they have greater chances of survival. Alright, so they have greater chance of survival. Thus, less, uh, it lessens the chance of extinction. It lessens the rate of extinction among the population of the organism. Unlike in the sexual ones, all organisms are the same, all offsprings are the same, then therefore any, any unchanged or any unstable environment that they encounter, all of them will be exterminated. Alright, so that's that. Uh, that's one, uh, another advantage of sexual reproduction over a sexual reproduction. Next one, number five. Uh, Fast removal of bad mutation. What does mean? What, what does it mean? All right. So it means that uh, due to the recombination of genes. All right. So due to the recombination of genes. So for example, this one will recombine with. Uh, let's use color. Uh, let's use color green. So due to the recombination of genes. So the one that happened here. So because of that recombination, you produce a unique individual. For example, if if one parent has a bad mutation in his in, in his body, what happens is it will be completely masked by another trait, which is a good one or a good trait. So it will mask down that particular trait over that particular offspring. Then over the next generation, so if you if you produce that particular uh, if you produce another offspring to the next generation and the next generation as well. Over the generation, that bad mutation will likely to disappear in the long run. So, meaning to say, sexual reproduction uh, is the only way of removing bad mutations in some organisms. And sometimes those, ba those bad mutations are some, uh, uh, these are some illnesses that can uh, be, uh, that can be harmful to the organism. All right. So, if you remember, the, uh, if you remember your eighth grade science, there is what they call the dominant and then the recessive genes. So, this particular set of genes is very important. It follows the Mendel's law of dominance, which states that if the dominant gene is paired up with a recessive uh, trait, then therefore the dominant trait is the one that will show up on the character or the physical aspect of the organism. So, therefore, if the dominant trait is a good mutation, then therefore it will mask down if the recessive trait has the bad, it contains the bad mutation, then therefore it will mask mask down the bad mutation. So eventually, it will be eradicated on the next generations to come. Alright, next one. Uh, since the bad mutations uh, will be eradicated, so therefore, you, you will have better adaptation if you are a parasite. Alright? So... Those parasites who are better adapted or better suited on their host, therefore, they will likely to survive. 
Alright? In among other parasites present in that particular host. Alright? So, if the host develops some kind of uh, immunity over that particular parasite, and if that parasite develops something over that immunity, then therefore, it is better adapted over the other one. Then therefore, it will likely to survive and reproduce. Alright, next one. Number seven is... The offsprings are the offsprings are dispersed and widely end up different or in different places from their parents. How? For example, uh, in some plants, some seeds in these plants are dispersed by wind. Alright, some are dispersed by animals and some are dispersed by water current. Alright, so what does it mean? So it means that the seeds will go to somewhere or some places where they are far away from their parents and they will likely to grow in there, then uh, reproduce and then so on and so forth. Alright, so meaning to say, uh, meaning to say, uh, offsprings usually move places yeah, away from there uh, or somehow they will end up after they uh, after they can st or if they can if, if they can stand up on their own they can end up in different places from their parents human uh, human do that uh, does that particular actions as well now if you uh, if you have a better job and you think you can stand up on your own then Maybe you can separate from your parents. Yeah. So eventually you end up in different places with them. All right. So in different places from them rather. All right. So that's the reason why sexual reproduction is very advantageous in some ways. All right. So if there are this, this uh, if there are advantages, there are also disadvantages. All right. So one year is uh, what they call the one here is the disadvantage of sexual reproduction. One is the one is you need two parents in order to reproduce. So since since this is a sexual reproduction, you need a male and a female organism. So missing one, then you will not reproduce. All right. So what is aside from having two parents, those two organisms must expend its energy in order to find and identify the possible mate in order to reproduce uh, somehow a uh, good quality of spring. For example, in some uh, in some animals, they two, uh, the males are fight, fighting over a female in order to reproduce. Then the female will select which one is worthy enough for uh, the offspring or for her offspring. Right? What trait in a male? What trait in their? Uh, what trait in that particular male organism is needed in order to make a worthy offspring? All right. So and also, they do have some uh, copulatory uh, rituals in some birds. There are copulatory rituals, and if they do that, they also expend energy in doing that. All right. So meaning to say. Um, Meaning to say, uh, you need to expend energy in order to find a mate. So you don't uh, get a mate by just an instant one. Alright? You need to expend energy. You need to find, you need to identify. In humans, we, does, we do that as well. We need to find, we need to identify the, our possible partner in the future so that we will be able to produce uh, or a unique offspring with that particular partner. All right, next one. Genetic recombination is counterproductive if conditions are stable. So, what does it mean? This is the time where the ge genetic recombination is somehow becomes useless due to the idea that the environmental or the environment is stable. Why do you need to re uh, recombine? All right? Why do you need to recombine if the environment is too stable? So, if the environment is too stable, then the tendency is the genetic recombination of, of, of some uh, chromosomes or of some cells or DNA is somehow becoming and becoming useless after all. But stable environment is very rare. Uh, environment always changes per time. All right, over time rather. All right, next number three, only half of the individuals are producing offspring. For example, the female is the one that produces offspring. All right, the male cannot do that one. All right, so so the males have uh, what they call that energy issue that we have right here. So they need to find, they need to identify, they need to impress their mates in order to reproduce. All right, so you need to do that one. All right, so when you do that, you need an energy. 
right? So, in order to produce offspring. Next one, less efficient in passing genes. Why less efficient in passing genes? Because the, the passing of genes is very slow, then therefore, the efficiency is very slow as well. But, but even though it is slow, evolution happens faster, all right? So, because of genetic recombination but the thing here is uh why is it uh another reason why is it less efficient it's because some organism produce one or two offspring all right in the long run so that is very you know inefficient all right so if you produce one or two offspring so it will likely to happen um if you it will likely to happen that uh, that you are limited Alright, the offsprings are limited to a certain genes that you can pass on. Alright, so it depends upon the number of springs that you will produce. Next one, the cost of recombination is somehow only favor. Okay, so a favorable combination of genes can be broken. So, ibig sabi, uh, or what does it mean? Alright, what does this one mean? Uh, the, the recombination can be broken. Alright, if the... Right, if the environment becomes unstable, right, so the usual recombination of genes can be altered in order to make a new set of genes favorable to that particular change that happened in that particular environment. All right, so when the recombination change, another one, it requires again energy. Right, so you require another energy, another set of energy in order to do again that set of recombination to make it favorable to the environment that you will live on. Alright, so these are the five disadvantages of sexual reproduction. Alright, so next one is the types of sexual reproduction. Actually, there are three types of sexual reproduction. So, first one that we have right here is hermaphrodism. Now, uh when an organism is is termed to be hermaphrodite, meaning to say that both male and female reproductive organs are present in one organism. Alright, so meaning to say one organism, it contains male and female reproductive system. For example, some earthworms have this kind of ability. So, earthworms, right? So, Earthworms and some species of roundworms have this uh, this type this type of sexual reproduction. Roundworms, right? So basically, that's how it does, right? So uh, some organism because they are hermaphrodite, they can they can self self fertilize. They can release their own egg. They can release their own sperm. Then it will fertilize and then it will develop to a new organism. Okay, some earthworms or some uh, organism like the earthworms, they do cross-fertilize. Even though they are hermaphrodite, even though the earthworms are hermaphrodite, they need another earthworms, they need another earthworms to, um, to cross-fertilize or to, for, to produce an offspring. Alright, so they, they just, uh, they just cross something like this. Right, so they just align their, uh, their sex organs and then they reproduce. Alright, so yeah. Okay, so next one. Uh, another group of organisms that uh, that exhibits hermaphrodism is are, are the corals, yeah? so some nidarians, and also some of the species of mollusks, so the clams that we have right here. All right, so what do we have? Uh, since uh, since corals and clams have the problem of finding mates because very logical they cannot move all right so say, since, since they can't move then therefore they have troubles in finding mates so what happens is uh, they tend to somehow they tend to somehow uh, form a hermaphrodite body so that they don't have any problems of they don't have any problems in terms of reproduction they just self fertilize then then that's it all right so that's the reason why organisms have become hermaphrodite and it's because of trouble in finding mates. Alright, next one. Alright, the second uh, second type of sexual reproduction is called the se a sequential hermaphrodism. Now, unlike hermaphrodite, unlike pure hermaphrodism, sequential hermaphrodism is somehow uh, separated. So, in one organism, alright, so in one organism, like the one that we have right here, it contains a male sex organ. 
Then eventually, over its lifetime, it will change up to become a female sexual organ. Alright, so, or sex organ. So, meaning to say, there is a reversal of, uh, there's a reversal of sex, yan, among the organisms. Alright, so, now, the reversal is somehow can be seen through the weight and size of the organism. Okay, so, just remember, it is different from a hermaphrodite, it's because of one thing, uh, the hermaphrodite, in one organism, it has two reproductive organs. In sequential hermaphrodism, in one organism, one reproductive organ, then it will change along the way. Alright, so next one. Alright, so the thing that you see here is the, or the organism that you see here is the blue war, blue ras. Right, so blue ras. Uh, this organism exhibits sequential hermaphrodism or pro, proto, protogeny. Yeah. Alright, so protogeny. Yeah. Alright, so irreversal. Okay, so as you can see here, the male can switch to become a female, or the female can switch to become a male, or the male can switch to become a female. Right, so as you can see, they are different in size, and I think uh, I think this is different also in weight. Alright, so yeah, so that's how uh, sequential hermaphrodism occurs in nature, and also some uh, some other kinds of fish like the clownfish that we have right here. So the clownfish also exhibits uh, sequential hermaphrodism. Alright, so eventually. Uh, if that is a male, it will become a female, and then the female, it will become a male along its lifetime. Alright, so another type of sexual reproduction, the third one, is the dioecious one. Alright, so when we talk about dioecious, uh, dioecious type of sexual reproduction, one organism has one sex organ, and that is a male and a female. So, a male organism contains male reproductive organs. So, this is a male. And a female organism contains female reproductive organ. So, that's the rule here. Alright? So, meaning to say, they have separate reproductive organ and separate sexes. Alright? So, that is dioecious. Now, in under dioecious, there are two ways of uh, being a dioecious. One is uh, you lay eggs, and the other one is you will produce a uh, live uh, live birth organism. All right. So we will talk about first the uh, the organism that lays eggs. All right. So these organisms like the reptiles, right? So the reptiles, the insect. All right, so some insects. All right, so amphibians. All right, so amphibians do lay eggs. All right, so and some mammals like the monotremes. All right, so the monotremes. So the uh, one example of monotremes are the platypus. Yeah. All right, so these organisms uh, tend to lay their eggs. They drop their eggs, then then that's it. All right, so and most of the time, what happens is uh, if you lay eggs and drop the eggs somewhere else. They don't have any protection up on all pre uh, in any predator that they will encounter. Why? Because eggs cannot move. Eggs cannot fight. All right. So eggs cannot fight over their predator. So meaning to say they will likely to be eaten. Now, if the eggs did develop and then it will become a uh, 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 an offspring, then if an offspring is not yet capable of walking or something like it cannot, uh, is not capable of fighting or or retaliating to the predator, then therefore the predator will likely to eat the newborn organism. All right, so it doesn't have much protection after all. Example: the fishes. The fishes will lay their eggs in the water, so they will lay thousands of eggs. So when they lay eggs, the sperm is also deposited in the water. So they need a medium. So that's the reason why they they need uh, moisture. The amphibians does that as well. If you hear the amphibians, uh, if you hear the frogs croaking around after the rain. They tend to reproduce. They are doing reproduction. Now, they tend to uh, deposit some sperms in the water because it needs moisture. So, generally, they, if, the, if there's no moisture, the sperm and then the eggs will dry up, then the offsprings will die. Alright, so because of the presence of uh, moisture, they will tend to swim all through, uh, all through the egg. So, all, uh, they will swim their way through the egg. Then, 
it will de develop into a new organism. But, if the water current washes away this egg, what happens is they are dispersed on different places, then they don't have any protection, then they are vulnerable to predators. Alright, so next one, they need lots of gametes to ensure the species. So, meaning to say, uh, what we have right here is, uh, if you lay eggs, then therefore, for survival, you need to lay many eggs. Why? It's because of one thing. You need, uh, you need it for survival and continuity of your species. For example, if if the fish will just lay one egg and then uh, one sperm, then what will happen if this uh, particular offspring has been eaten by a predator? Then the offspring of that organism will be exterminated and the continuity of the species will be affected. Alright, so they need a lot of gametes. So when the frog lay eggs, it is not only one, but it is thousands and also the sperm is also thousands. Alright, so some reptiles, they lay eggs in tens or twenties, alright, so for survival. Even though the other eggs are being eaten, then the other eggs will still survive, then still, continuity of life. Alright, so that's, uh, that's, how, that's how important that uh, an organism that lays eggs should lay uh, many eggs, alright, not one or not two but thousands of eggs now in some insects in some insects some insects uh, tend to live shorter over the lifetime so they tend to reproduce they, they tend to have sex and then after doing sex they will die all right so what happens is the female organism will lay thousands of eggs which is already fertilized then what happens is uh, they will develop on its own Alright, then the insect will die. For example, dragonflies. Right? So and also the the fruit flies. Yeah. Right? In Tagalog the langaw. Yeah, new langaw. Alright, so if you happen to see a fruit fly or, or a langaw, uh, they tend to lay eggs and then develop into maggots and eventually those maggots will become flies. Then the flies will have eight hours or less to live, then after eight hours they will die. So you get you get the reason why they lay, lay so many eggs. All right. So next one, another form of being dioecious is uh, you develop the organism internally within the female's body. All right. So these are some uh, characteristics of placental organism, placental organism, and the uh, marsupial organism. Yeah. So the organism develops inside the female's body. Now, what is the advantage of this one over the egg-laying organisms? Protection. So logically, if you carry your young inside your body, then therefore you protect it in all sorts of, uh, in all sorts of predations. Alright, so therefore, unless unless the female or unless the mother is being eaten by the predator. Alright, so that's that's the if, if it is the other way around. Alright, so in terms of protection, there's no uh, there's no such or there's no such uh, there's uh, um, there's no other fancy things about this one. In terms of protection, there's a uh, greater protection in organism who lays uh, who who do live birds. Yeah. Right, so humans are included in here. Next one, it needs a lot of gametes to ensure species. Why? Uh, although the, although these organisms uh, only uh, gives up one egg, but the catch here is the male organism have so many sperms that they deposit over the egg. So around one is to three million sperm. Something like that. But the thing here is, in terms of fertilization, it's just one, one, one to one. All right, one is to one. All right. So meaning to say, uh, there is a random, uh, there will be a random chances that will happen that uh, different sperm will di will uh, fertilize that particular egg. All right. So meaning to say, it will produce a unique offspring. So still, uh, in order to in order to reproduce, you need a lot of gametes in order to ensure the continuity of the species. Why? It's because if there is only one sperm, for example, if there is only one sperm and it travels down to the female reproductive system, it might it will likely to die due to the changes in the environment. So technically, the female reproductive system is acidic. 
all right in terms of environment so the thing there is the sperm will likely to die along its way then it will not uh, be able to fertilize the egg so you know already the reason why there are so many sperms after all all right so next one uh, organisms that is uh, doing this kind of reproduction uh, need sophisticated reproductive system. That's the reason why we have very complicated reproductive system. We have, we do have uterus to uh, house this uh, developing embryo that we have. All right. So, and also, some organisms have copulatory rituals and some weird uh, copulatory organs. All right. So, the penis and then the vagina is needed here in order to reproduce. Okay. So, yeah. Only organisms that does this particular uh, uh, type of play or type of reproduction uh, does this particular copulatory rituals. In some birds, uh, they have uh, complicated dances before reproduction. In some animals, they fight o they fight their way out over a female, and so on and so forth. All right. So, okay. Finally. What we have here in this type of rep or in this type of sexual reproduction is that it uh, produce fewer zygotes. Alright, so but why fewer zygotes? It's because if there's one egg and then it will fertilize by uh, by one sperm, then therefore how many organisms that will be produced? Only one organism. It's either male or female. It depends upon the organism. Mm -hmm. So there's only one organism, unless it is a it is an identical twin or a fraternal twin. All right. Now, so there's only one zygote that will form. But the thing here is, uh, in terms of survivability, even though it is just one, the survival survivability is increased exponentially why it's because the, there is a protection from the parent and also the the organism will develop inside the female's body it will get its nourishment from the female's body it will uh, remove its waste from the female's body and so on and so forth in order to be uh, to grow and develop to become a new organism all right, so again, fewer zygotes but better survival. All right, so that's the one one ace of this particular type of reproduction. And with that, and with that, in this lesson, you have learned about the two types of reproduction, which is the sexual and asexual reproduction. And also in this in this discussion, you have learned about the disadvantages of asexual reproduction and the advantages of asexual reproduction. And also you learned the disadvantage and advantages of sexual reproduction. Now, um, in this lesson as well, you know the different types of asexual reproduction. We have the budding, we have the parthenogenesis, we have the gemulation. And in, in sexual reproduction, there's there are also types of sexual reproduction. We have hermaphrodism, we have sequential hermaphrodism, and we do have dioecious organisms. Alright, so with that... I hope you did learn something on this uh, discussion that we have right here about the types of reproduction. Before uh, I end up this video, there's only one thing that is very important here, the continuity of the species. Regardless of what type of reproduction that you will use, what is very important here is the continuity of the species, all right, of a particular organism. And with that, that ends up our discussion on this video and I hope you did learn something from it and you write down your if you have questions you write down and you write down your question in the comment section below this video and with that smile um, do smile always and have a good day everyone.